Hey, it's Luke at HIP, and if you've been listening to the Grow Ortho podcast maybe for weeks, months, or in some cases years, you know that we typically interview an industry expert, whether it be someone working in the office or a consultant uh, or just a strategic partner for orthodontist. Well, we're going to change things up just a bit, and this year we've actually released four books. And so we're going to release every audiobook, basically a chapter for each episode. Listen, enjoy, and let us know what you find valuable and implement and what works well in your office. Thanks so much for supporting HIP, and we hope you enjoy all these episodes on the Practice Growth Series. Chapter 4. A Team That Understands Processes and Procedures If attitude were everything... Everyone would be a superstar when starting a new job. If you hire the right people based on the previous chapters, these people show up with enthusiasm and eagerness to please. Sadly, when the front desk and scheduling coordinator role is considered just reception, people develop their ideas about the job. The front desk is primarily about getting the leads that contact your practice to schedule a consultation and then getting those consultations to show up to start treatment. If your front desk team cannot do this, It does not matter how many ads you place or how much marketing you do. The leads will fall through the cracks and the money will be wasted. It comes down to this. Anybody that handles new patient phone calls and scheduling has the most critical role in the practice. The treatment coordinators can only do their jobs if they have exams scheduled for them, and that is the responsibility of the front desk, to schedule those opportunities and get them in the chair. They drive and dictate the volume of production more than anybody. So how can you make sure your team does it efficiently? It all comes down to training your team on the proper processes and procedures. If you consistently show them what you are looking for and give them the tools to succeed, there's no reason why they won't be able to schedule hundreds of prospective patients to fill those chairs every month. However, to do this successfully, your team must understand the central aspect of their role to be true sales professionals. You should not take the front desk role lightly. The front desk and scheduling team are not supposed to be warm bodies with a pulse doing mundane daily tasks. They should not be making people feel as bored and resentful as they do, whether on the phone or in person, solely because they hate their minimum wage job. What they should be doing every day is showing up with the right attitude and goal to make a sale. And to make sales, they have to show people why they believe in the products and services they are selling. How, you may ask, are they selling if they're not the ones making the deals and signing the contracts? Before we answer this question, it's essential to determine what sales is. What it means to be in sales. The word sales sometimes has a negative connotation associated with it. It is often perceived as someone trying to convince you to buy something you don't need, or someone pushing you to close on something. It's an effort to try to get money out of you. However, everything is sales. The word sales itself means helping people. If you don't believe me, just look at the word's etymology. The infinitive to sell comes from the old English word selling, which means to give. Unfortunately, the definition became negative somewhere along the line, possibly due to Hollywood stereotypes of salespeople. But to sell means to give. If you are operating out of integrity, you give people your time. In a new patient consult, you're giving people your time by providing them with information. But you are also giving them wisdom, perspective, empathy, value, advice, and coaching. How are they selling if they're not making the deals and signing the contracts? The answer to this is simple. If you miss just one new patient call per day, that's $1 million of revenue loss at the end of the year. Therefore, if your front desk and scheduling team is missing 10 calls per day, that's $10 million in revenue lost at the end of the year. On the other hand, if they schedule 10 new patients per day, that's $10 million in revenue gained at the end of the year if your treatment coordinator can get them started. Your front desk and scheduling team are the first individuals who can take your patients from where they currently are where they want to be by selling them products and services that will get them there. Once your team is clear on where these leads want to be, selling comes into play. So you need to instill in your team that 80% of growth and success is in their mindset and philosophy. 
they will do it if they believe they can sell it and have the tools to do it efficiently. The remaining 20% is the physical mechanics of actually making it happen. The interested leads will take the time to go to your website, put in their information, and request an appointment. There's a reason why they did that, but they may not be fully committed. They are guarded against all the negative stereotypes associated with what they think sales is. How can your front desk team lower the guards of prospective patients? As sales professionals, it should be the goal and vision of your team members to establish that trust and connection to get people to let down their defenses. There are numerous ways you can train your team to do this. Show your true intentions. You want to be influential, not persuasive. Persuasion is pushing somebody and convincing somebody to take something they don't need, isn't going to help them, and isn't a good decision. But it's a good decision for you because you get a commission check and bonus. Influence, on the other hand, is a good deed. Influencing someone to make the best decision comes from a place of integrity. If it's a good fit and good decision for them, closing somebody is one of the best gifts you can give. If you can't close them, you can't help them. If you can't close the contract, you can't make their teeth look good. If it's the right fit, and you know that your product or service will help this person, it is your job to do your best to influence them to say yes. Understanding that everybody's afraid and defensive helps us to approach them with empathy in this process and truly serve them. When you want nothing but the best for the person you're speaking to, that message gets transmitted, even through the phone. With this intention in mind, you can forget all about sleazy salespeople and help patients get the beautiful smiles they desire. Use softer language. A subtle shift in language can open up a whole new window to how people perceive your words and receive what you're trying to tell them. The best words to use are softening words. Possibly, maybe, convenient, and appropriate. Take a look at how these phrases are different. So the next step would be to go ahead and get a consultation scheduled so we can get you in to see doctor's name. So the next step would be to book an initial consultation. We actually have some openings tomorrow, if that might possibly be convenient for you. The first sentence is presumptuous. You're assuming the patient is ready to schedule and come into the practice, and it might be a little persuasive. The second sentence, on the other hand, sounds softer. The ball is in the patient's court, but you are softening your tone to not sound too pushy. Look at another example of setting the frame for the same day start using softer language. This is what we call a trial close, as we are pre-framing what will happen to set the right expectations for a same day start. So. The way the appointment is going to go is, you're going to come in and you're going to meet TC's name, the treatment coordinator. She's fantastic. We're going to take some photos and records and the doctor is going to take a look at patient's name. If doctor's name does decide the patient's name is ready for treatment, we could get patient's name back into the clinic the same day so that you don't have to come back for another appointment, if that might be convenient for you. Another way to help people lower their guard is to take big, scary concepts and make them make sense by using kind of like bridges. Here's an example. It's kind of like, insert DIY company, but you actually get to work with an actual doctor and your teeth aren't going to fall out of your face. LOL. Change your tempo and tonality. When you're on the phone or in the consultation room, you can change the vibe of how words and language are received by saying the same thing in two different ways. So pay attention to the two T's, tonality and tempo, since they are the keys to the kingdom. You should always sound skeptically optimistic whenever you talk to a prospective patient. Keep your tone always upbeat, but framed with a hint of doubt. Here's an example. I see that you took some time to request an appointment with us. Is that right? Use connecting phrases. It's all about impact versus information. You want to make an impact, not just give information. Connecting phrases are how we take information and make it impactful. Some examples of connecting phrases are, in order to, so that you, which means you, without having to, which will allow you to. Take a look at this example of how to use them. In order to save you time, we can actually start treatment that same day 
which means you won't have to come back for another appointment, if that is possibly more convenient for you. Using connecting phrases is most important in the trial close on the new patient call and at the end of the consultation when you're trying to make the same day start. Chunk down your spiel. Don't reveal everything at once. People's guards are up, so they're deaf to whatever you're saying. If you chunk it up into three or four segments, it's softer, and they have a moment to digest the information. There's power in the pause. Get comfortable with the awkward pauses. Don't fill in the silence. Put your phone on mute if you need to. Soft, slow, pause. It's powerful. Analyze these two examples. Example one. Hello? Hi, patient's name. This is your name from practice name. I'm calling regarding your recent appointment you requested on Facebook for a consultation. I can provide you with information and set up an appointment if you'd like. Is this a good time to talk? Uh, sorry, where did you say you're calling from? Example two. Hello? Hello, is this patient's name? Yeah, may I ask who's calling? Hi, this is your name. I'm giving you a call from practice name. Pause and give them a moment to digest and see if they recognize you. Oh, yes, hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks. I was giving you a call because you took some time to request a consultation with us, is that right? Yes, I did. Great. Is this a good time to talk? In the first example, the scheduling coordinator isn't allowing the patient to get a word in. She's revealing all the information at once from the beginning. In the second example, we break the information down and allow the patient to recall her request while finding out more about her. This also gets her talking a bit more, which will lower her guard. Step-by-step -step procedures. Now that you understand what these calls should sound like, we will review the procedures. How to answer the phone. Get into the habit of letting people know you are there to help them. A great way to do this is by ditching the standard phrase, can I help you? And replacing it with, I can help you. Saying this will show them you are eager to serve their needs and help them with all their inquiries. Look at how impactful it is in comparison to the standard response. Hello, this is your name. How can I help you? Hello, this is your name. I can help you. If a prospective patient asks you about pricing over the phone, don't shut them down. If someone asks how much it'll cost, don't say, we don't give any quotes over the phone, in a condescending tone. Always provide them with an answer, even if you are unsure what their treatment costs will look like. Pushing back and not explaining pricing is not a good idea. They will call somewhere else and get the answer they're looking for. Similarly, don't drop the big number if they ask how much treatment costs. Prospective clients will be turned off if they hear from the beginning that the treatment will cost them $6,000. When you see car advertisements on TV, they don't lead by saying, this Audi will cost you $50,000. Instead, they will give you a down payment percentage and the lowest monthly fee. It's essential to do the same when discussing average treatment costs. The strategy of not discussing fees is not going to help your practice. Instead, give prospective patients accurate, digestible numbers. Here's what you can say if a prospective patient is asking you about fees in your initial conversation. We have to see you to provide a treatment plan with accurate fees, but treatment typically starts at insert your average down payment and monthly payment. Example, $300 down and $149 a month. Would something like that work for you? Then, go silent. Great! When can you come in this week for your free consultation? Place people on hold. Sometimes we get busy and inevitably have to put people on hold. Have you ever called a company to inquire about their services, and when they answered, they quickly responded with, Hello, please hold. Then the annoying background music comes on, leaving you no opportunity to respond? Yeah, I'm sure we've all experienced that at some point. And let's be honest, it can be an instant turnoff. You might even end up hanging up without feeling bad about it. That is called a dry hold in business. You may be thinking, well, my practice doesn't do that. We aren't that bad. But are they doing this? Thank you for calling, practice name. Can I place you on a quick hold? 
Yeah, that's a nicer dry hold. Better, but not great. And here's why. The prospective patient can hang up at any point during that hold. And if they do, you haven't collected any of their information. You have no idea who they are. And they probably won't call back. They'll call somewhere else, losing you a new lead and possible revenue. Instead, train your team on the wet hold. Here's what it looks like. Thank you for calling practice name. This is your name. I can help you. Okay, great. I'm happy to help you with that. May I ask for your name and number in case we get disconnected? Then log this information into your system. Okay, patient's name. I need to place you on a very brief hold while I do X, Y, Z. Is that okay? Great. I will be right back. Now you know who they are. You have their information. And it's in your system. If they have to hang up, you can always call them back. How to respond when a patient says they will call you back? Don't wait for the patient to call you back. Once a patient is off the phone, the odds of them calling you back soon is very slim. They will forget or won't consider it a priority. They may get back to you in a few weeks or even search for another orthodontic practice. Instead, ask them when a good time would be for you to call them back. You could say something like, You can call me back, but we'd like to schedule callbacks just for your convenience. We want to make it simple and easy and provide you with a great experience. How's tomorrow at 1 p.m. or Monday at 8 a.m.? Use Google Calendar, Outlook, or Practice Beacon and make a task to call that person back at that time. How to edify the doctor, team, office on a scheduling call. You want to sell the practice you work for to make a sale. It's that simple. You have to show patients why your practice is better than the competition. Let your prospective patient know why your practice is an excellent choice for them and their needs. Here's what you can say. Let me tell you a bit of practice name or doctor name and what makes us different. Short soundbite on the mission and values, as well as a short blurb about the doctor, doctors. Schedule a patient. We live in a time in which consumers want everything now. When prospective patients call, fill out a form, or opt in via an ad, the best thing you can do to convert that prospect into a patient is to schedule their new patient consult ASAP. When would you like to come in tomorrow? Or this week? Let them know you have open spots for them, or you can fit them in at a time that works best for them. As Alex says, even if you're fully booked, make it happen. Respond when someone cannot come in within 72 hours. We have busy lives, so we expect that people can't take time out of their schedule to attend an appointment right away. The beautiful thing about today's world is the access to the internet and video conferencing. It's made our lives that much easier, especially when the world is shut down for two years because of a pandemic. Provide your prospective patients with the option of a virtual consult with a treatment coordinator. The patient can do it from the comfort of their own home and minimize the impact on their time and schedule. You'll learn more about virtual consults in Chapter 6. Follow up before an appointment to prevent no-shows. Send a text message or phone them the morning of their appointment. There's nothing worse than putting your effort into a conversation with someone who doesn't plan on showing up. Here's what you can say. Hey, patient's name. We are looking forward to seeing you at 1 p.m. today. If you need directions, here is a link to our listing. Insert Google Maps link. This should open on Maps and bring you straight to us. Let me know if you have any questions. P.S. Ask for your name when you get here. What else should you know? There may be other inquiries or questions you will need to know when speaking with prospective patients. The most frequently asked questions by patients usually relate to payment, insurance, and treatment. Therefore, it would be wise to provide your front desk and scheduling team with a list of frequently asked questions, FAQs, they may encounter outside of what is mentioned in this book. At https colon forward slash forward slash hip dot agency forward slash Front Desk Secrets. You can access a list of FAQs suggested by the American Association of Orthodontics that might be relevant to your particular style of practice. This is an excellent opportunity to work collaboratively with your team to develop the correct responses that suit your business needs and requirements. That way, 
your team can have them readily accessible with short scripts to relay the answers to patients properly. Once your front desk and scheduling team are trained to handle calls and schedule leads, it's time to turn on the marketing. You can spend the marketing dollars with confidence once you know that your team will care for those leads and nurture them into new patients in your practice. Remember the four principles for growing an orthodontic practice from the introduction. One, the orthodontist is a technician, not a manager, so hire a good one. Two, training your team to follow the steps to convert every viable lead into a new patient, and there are no bad leads. Three, marketing to attract the right leads. Four, software that tracks your metrics and holds your team accountable for the goals you've set. As the leads begin contacting your practice, read on to find out exactly what to say to them so that they schedule their free consultation and show up for that appointment. The next chapter on Simple Scripts provides the words and language that convert hundreds of leads into new patients every month for our busiest practices.